All right, welcome to the channel. It's great to have you here. Today, I wanted to go over my Mach 4 tool change uh, and give that to you. I think it has a lot of capability that most tool changes that you might come across don't have. Uh, so in the tool change, it lets you pick or tell it if your spindle is controlled by the computer or not. Uh, it will also let you use a tool setter, which is hard mounted or somewhere permanently on the table, or if you're using something similar to this, just a touch plate, you could tell it that as well inside the code and it will act accordingly. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how it works, first in the touch plate version, second with the tool setter, and uh, if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll go over line by line what the code does and how to install it into your version of Mach 4. So I'll st stick around. Alright, so for the first version of this tool change we're going to demo is the manual version. What the manual version allows you to do is to pick anywhere on the bed you want to use the probe and you'll use a touch plate uh, with an alligator clip on the router bit. I'm sure you've seen them. You can buy them on Amazon for real cheap. What's nice about this one is if you're doing um, like a 3D carve or something and you've accidentally, well you've zeroed your workpiece and you carve it away and now you need to do a tool change, maybe go from a roughing bit to a finishing bit, you don't have that reference plane anymore on top of the workpiece, you may have carved it all the way. This allows you to go somewhere else on the table, it's going to probe the current tool that's in the spindle, instruct you to change it out for the next one, it'll probe the next one and apply the offset on the fly and you can keep going. So that's the one I'll demo now. Uh, the other nice thing about this one is it remembers the location that the spindle was at when the, T when the M6 was reached. So you can move it anywhere you want, do the tool change, and it'll come right back and start right where it was. So one thing to note about this tool change is you need to set up the tool table. What we need to know is the description of the tool, and that you get to type that in, whatever you want it to be, and we need to know the length of the tool. The length the length where and the diameter we don't really care about, or the diameter where. We only care about the length and the description. Um, and the length is not the overall length of the tool, it is the length of stick out. So what's sticking out of the bottom of the spindle? That's what we want to know. So you will need to come up with a reliable way of putting your tool back in the, in the collet within a quarter of an inch, plus or minus, which I think is reasonable and easy to do by eye. So we're going to start the tool change and let you see how it works. So it says to turn off your spindle, so this is where you would turn your router off or turn the spindle off if Mach 4 can't control it for you. Uh, if Mach 4 can control your spindle, there's an option in the tool change, you could tell it that um, and then you won't have, it won't tell you to turn the spindle off, it'll do it automatically for you. So turn off your spindle, hit OK says now click OK, then jog to a safe tool change position within two inches of the touch plate and click cycle start. So we'll do that and we could jog. So like I said, you can do this anywhere on the table you want away from your workpiece. It doesn't matter what height you do it at, you don't have to be, if you zero it out to the spoil board, you don't have to be on the spoil board. If you zero it out to the top of your workpiece, you don't have to be on the top of your workpiece. You can do it anywhere you want because this, this tool change probes the current tool and the second, the, the next tool. So the the tool plate or the touch plate is installed and we'll hit cycle start. Okay, so it's probed the first tool. It says please change to tool number three, which is a white side quarter inch compression bit and click OK. So we'll change to our white side quarter inch compression bit. Now 
Now I'm sure I don't have to say this, I'm not tightening up the spindle nut with the wrenches. This is just for demonstration. Tighten your spindle nut up. So now we'll jog down to it two in, within two inches. Okay, so I got the tool changed. It says jog down to within two inches of the touch plate and hit cycle start. Okay, now it says remove the touch plate and the alligator clip from the router. The gantry will move and the motor will spin and continue G-code. Press OK to continue. So we'll move our tool or our uh, touch plate. Get it out of the way. Okay. Turn on the spindle. This is where you would turn your spindle on. Hit OK. And it moved back to where it started when it first came across the... M6. So now we're going to change one word in the code and use the tool setter to do the tool change. And you'll see how much faster it actually is to set up a tool setter. Okay, so now we're going to do the automatic tool change using the tool setter. Uh, just changing one word from true to false in the macro allows you to do this. And you do it to tell it where the tool setter is located on your table. So we'll go ahead and do that. So tool three is in the machine. So we'll do a, M a tool change M6 T2 and hit cycle start. So it tells me to turn off your spindle. Mine's off, hit okay. So it moves all the way over to my spindle location. It rapids down and it slowly probes the tool setter. And now change to tool number two, an eighth inch compression router bit and press okay when I'm done. Now you may have noticed when the spindle came back up after probing the tool, it moved over. I did that because when I'm changing the tool, Sometimes the tool will fall out and I don't like it when it hits the tool setter. So that you can also adjust in the macro and have a tool change location wherever you want it on the bed. So we'll go ahead and change out this router bit. Turn the spindle back on, so we would do that if we we're cutting something, hit OK, and away it goes. Okay, so that is the two modes of tool change that this script can accommodate. So if you stick around to the next part portion of the video, I'm going to go over the code and explain to you what it does. Uh, if, if you don't care, you just want to use it, it's as simple as copy and paste, put it in your machine. Uh, and you can figure it out for yourself if you'd like. So if you've made it this far, hopefully you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I hope that it earns your subscription and that it was helpful to somebody out there. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them if I can. Um, otherwise, if you're gonna stick around, we'll get into the computer and take a look at the code. Okay, so here is the uh, the macro in Mach 4. So what you have to do to get to here is to go 
into your script editor and if you go over on the left side panel here you'll see this is your Mach 4 hobby directory go down to profiles and expand that select the profile you're using or the profile that you want this to M6 in select that Go on the macros select that and then double click the m6.mcs whatever's in there highlight it delete it copy and paste this from the YouTube description in here and <clears throat> Uh, we'll go over this real quick. So this is the TLR Smart Tool Change. Uh, here is a link to my YouTube channel. This tool assumes that your spindle uses a collet and collet nut to retain the tool. You could also use tool setters if you wanted to. Uh, before continuing, ensure that your input signals and mapping are correct. That's because if you use a G31, that's one input pin if you use a G31.1 that's a different input pin um, so keep that in mind if you're going to be using this with a tool setter I have that set up as G31 and if you're going to use it as a with a tool excuse me I have that backwards if you're going to use a touch plate that's a G31 command if you're going to use a tool setter that's a G31.1 command uh, and you can change those if you really want to get into the nitty gritty to customize it for yourself. Okay, so here's the user inputs. This is really all we're concerned with. So the very first one is manual change false. Uh, this is true for manual change or false for an automatic change. If you have it false, or that means you're going to use a tool setter that's permanently mounted on your bed somewhere, you must have a reliable homing for X, Y, and Z. Uh, spindle control, true, can Mach 4 control your spindle? Uh, if it can, it'll run the M3 and M5 commands. If it can't, it will direct you during the tool change to turn off your spindle. Uh, and then here's the auto tool change specific. This is really specific for the tool setter. Uh, X probe and Y probe, this is the location in machine coordinates of your probe. X tool change position and Y tool change position. This is the machine coordinates of where you want the tool change to take place. Uh, so after it probes, it will move to this and allow you to change the tool. I like having this because if it stays right over the tool setter, sometimes when you break loose the collet, the tool will fall on the collet. Excuse me, the tool will fall down on the tool setter, and I don't like that. Uh, okay, now we're moving on to the tool information. Default tool length. If you don't have your tool table in Mach 4 filled out, it'll use this two inches. This needs to be at least or longer than your longest tool that you have. Call it at probe Z coordinate. This is how far from zero. So once your Z axis homes, if there's no tool in the collet, this is how far it would have to travel down before the bottom of the collet hits the tool setter. So in, on my machine, it's just over six inches. Um, extra probe distance, this is your fudge factor because uh, you're never gonna get the tool in your collet in the exact same place every single time. So this is your fudge factor here. Uh, the smaller this number, you can read here, the smaller this number, the larger the pucker factor. Um, probe prep speed how this works is it takes this number the overall distance between home and the tool setter it adds the tool length it adds your fudge factor so instead of traveling uh, six inches down it adds the two so now it's only four inches down it adds your fudge factor so now it's only three and a quarter inches down uh, and so that is how it knows where the roughly where the end of your tool is before it probes. So the probe prep speed is how fast it's going to jog down to what these numbers equal. Uh, and then from there, it will probe for two and a quarter inches. You can change this but I have it just set a little bit longer than my longest tool. So that's how far I'll travel while it's looking for a tool. And it will probe at five inches a minute, which you can change. 
and your spindle dwell, this is how long Mach 4 will wait for the spindle to stop spinning or for the spindle to start spinning after an M3 or an M5 command. So it's in microseconds. Uh, so 10,000 microseconds is 10 seconds. Uh, moving on here, what it does is first it checks if the current tool is the same as the selected tool. If it is, it tells you that your tool change is not required. Uh, then it will go on and check if it's controlling the spindle or if you are. If it is, it turns it off. If you are, it tells you to turn it off. Uh, and then it checks to see if you're doing a manual tool change with the touch plate or if you're doing an automatic tool change with the tool setter. Uh, so it will either walk you through jogging to a new location and attaching the, uh, the touch plate or it will just go straight over the tool setter and go to town. Uh, then it runs the probe function, uh, which is way down here. This is the probe function. Uh, so after it probes the first tool, it, it, it probes both tools during every tool change. So after it probes the first tool, it remembers that location and then tells you to change the tool to the next tool. And then it will run the, the probe function again. And when the machine stops, when it trips the, tr the probe, it applies the, this old offset from the first probe to the second probe. So that's how you get the two tools that might be different lengths to come out on the same zero. Uh, and then it'll tell you to remove your alligator clip, clip and touch plate if you're doing a, a manual tool change. Otherwise, it will just keep going and turn the spindle on and go to town. So pretty straightforward. If you walk through all this, it should kind of make sense to you. If you notice anything in here that's not right or could be done better, leave a comment in the description below. And uh, if you have run into issues with this, please let me know. I'll do my best to try to help you. Uh, so again, I really hope that this is a value for somebody. If it is, please, consider subscribing to the channel, giving the video a thumbs up or sharing it with someone that you think might need it. Uh, so thank you for watching and stay well.